guys, it is Tanya and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm back with another speed build and we are building an abandoned convenience store. I'd gotten a couple of suggestions to do some sort of abandoned store. I also got suggestions for an abandoned tiny house, so I thought I would do a small store that was abandoned. So it's kind of tiny kind of and still a store and still abandoned and I thought it was just kind of a fun idea so this is built on the lot that the bar was located on in Strangerville and I had a lot of fun with it it's kind of an interesting little style it's very simple because I feel like most convenience stores don't have very elaborate shapes to them and I wanted it to be like really broken and run down so there's just like a lot of stuff randomly placed about and obviously the inside most of the stuff is like gone and there's just like tables shoved around with random supplies still on them and I just it was a really fun thing to do because it's kind of all over the place and messy and I, I don't know it was just it was different uh, to take a break from some houses and do a community lot so I hope you guys do like it. I'm still sick so if my voice sounds a little bit funky that's why I just wanted to put that out there but anyway this uh, lot is classed as a cafe because I put a barista stand in there. I was trying to figure out what the best uh, like out I guess like best stand would be for inside or like what lot type this should be and I thought the barista stand looked the most like a counter you might go up to in a convenience store that has like all the food next to it so this uh, functions as a cafe if you really want to go here <laughs> but um, it, it's just kind of run down and gross and I think some of the new decals we got with the last couple of packs both Strangerville and Get Famous allowed for this to look pretty cool. I did end up deleting one of those cars out there. I just left the truck in the end and put a bunch of stuff in the back of it because why would there be two cars here if it's abandoned? An old broken down one with a bunch of stuff in the back? That makes sense. But, <laughs> you know, at first I was just like, ooh, parking lot, let's put some cars here. But here I am deleting some walls and putting some poles in here. I figured those could be like the poles that are like keeping the building together where the drywall is like kind of based around. So those are exposed so you can see into the build, which I thought was a really cool idea. I believe I saw somebody on Twitter do something similar recently, but I, I can't recall who it was. Uh, but that's kind of where I got that idea. Um, we're just figuring out the roof shape here. And I did this little bump out over here because I was like, oh, there should probably be like an extra space in here where the bathroom would be. Because I assume there would be a bathroom in this place for employees to use. I guess other people too, but... I wanted to go ahead and include that. The exterior is taking place and it was really cool to use the new windows that came with Strangerville as well as that like crashed engine from an airplane and a bunch of those like buckets of like toxic waste essentially. And it was really cool that we got these like signs in the pack that like have all different ones with this one's a grocery store so I figured you know convenience store that makes sense but there's like a VHS tape one so that would be like a video store which would be a really cool thing to add um <laughs> maybe I could build the last blockbuster that'd be kind of cool I also love this sign that's just like broken that I put in front of the place uh that's kind of what inspired the build to begin with and then I placed a bunch of these crates outside that are from cats and dogs because I feel like they just kind of added to the abandoned look of this place as well as all of the cracks and stains and just stuff everywhere a little bit of overgrown grass granted this area is not a very lush place so the grass doesn't make a whole lot of sense in a lot of it so I just added little patches here and there of overgrown areas and then we're just adding a little back porch area for uh, where employees would go out to bring out the trash and we end up adding a trash can over there I wish we had like fully functional dumpsters because I'm pretty sure we don't have that. I know we did in Sims 3, like in late night, you could go like dumpster diving and stuff. And I think that would be a really cool thing to add for community lots in the Sims 4. But here we are painting the outside. It ends up being a mixture of brick and horizontal like siding, which I thought looked pretty nice. It fit, I think, the neighborhood fairly well and looked like it was added on to at some point. And that's why the whole thing isn't brick. It had like little extensions. So I quite liked that and then we have a sliding glass door as our front door. I put a crack on it to make it look a little broken and old but I thought like something like that made sense to be the front door for this little shop and yeah it's it's pretty much coming together and <laughs> we're just gonna add some more green grass growing really long out over on the side and then probably start placing some random stuff inside. It's very cluttered. It's all over the place. There's just random stuff it's cluttered but also empty at the same time so it's not going to be like you walk in and it's this beautiful convenience store it's definitely in um 
disrepair. So <laughs> uh, don't be expecting like a fully beautiful little convenience store. Although that could be kind of fun to build at some point too. But I had a lot of fun building a very like torn apart place because it's been a bit since I've done something like that, especially because lately I've been doing like pretty family homes. And I mean, I did a container home, but it wasn't dirty. It was just that style, I suppose, which is a style I really like. And here I am grabbing some wood panels from the debug menu to kind of board up these windows. And I made them kind of off uh, so that they're not all in a straight line to make it look a little bit more natural. Like, you know, things were just like tacked up there real quick and sloppily. And I wanted the whole place to kind of look like it was falling apart. So like whoever was in here or whatever happened, why is it destroyed like this? Why is almost all the supplies gone? And like what happened? It looks like people left in a hurry and I kind of like that. Like you can tell your whole your own stories on what you think might have happened in the store and I think it kind of goes with what happened in Strangerville, which I still haven't finished the whole storyline for that yet. Hopefully I'll find time to do that sometime soon. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm sick so I've been staying home, taking time off work because I haven't been feeling well, but um, I haven't had a whole lot of time to record because I'm not feeling super well. I wanted to get this voiceover done and get this video out because I really, really enjoyed this build and I wanted to share it with you guys. But um, I'm not entirely sure how many videos are going to go out this week, like I mentioned, just because I'm not feeling super well. But I am hoping sometime tonight after I rest for a little while to finally go through those 10k submissions. So that should be coming out this weekend. I'm really excited to go through those and I think that's going to make me feel a lot better today. So I'm really hyped about that, but we're adding a bunch of graffiti on the outside of this building because I really think that adds to the like abandoned nature of it. People are just like, oh, look at this canvas. I can spray paint. And uh, so I wanted to add some of that. I also personally think graffiti is gorgeous. <laughs> Granted, you shouldn't do it in places you're not supposed to, but I think it's really pretty and I really like what it added to this build. Uh, so just adding a variety of it. We got it from quite a few packs, so it was kind of cool to add uh, a bunch of different pieces to the outside of this build. I think it just gives it a little bit more personality. And yeah, so that's pretty much the outside. I think we mostly just have the inside left to do. Uh, just adding a couple more trees as well. I know this town is fairly bare, but there are a couple of like mesquite trees. I think that's how you pronounce it. So I wanted to make sure there was a little bit of greenery on this lot just to break it up a little bit. And now we are on to the inside. Like I mentioned, I have a barista bar on the inside which I thought worked really well, but I also used the new bar back that we got with Strangerville that, uh, you know, it's obviously for a bar, but I thought it worked really good here to have like a cooler where you could buy stuff from. And there are a lot <laughs> of folding chairs throughout this lot because in order for it to be considered a cafe, you needed at least six chairs. So I put those around and you needed a variety of tables as well. So I thought the tables could be display shelves where things were being sold. And at first I put them kind of like neatly and I was like, no, this place is like been run through and broken down and things are like all over the place so they shouldn't be neat. I kind of wanted them to resemble where they had once been in that corner though and we're just making a stack of folding chairs over here uh, because I mean I can stack them up. I wish you could like actually fold them closed and put them against a wall. That would make a little bit more sense or you could rotate them and just like have them laying on the side on the floor. That would be great. But I added a lot of wall decals throughout this place to make the walls look really torn up. And then we're going to be adding all kinds of random items on these tables, both like supplies you might purchase and just stuff around. And I love that I was able to add that broom on the floor. And if you're seeing a lot of items that you don't recognize, uh, that's because I used a lot of stuff from the debug menu. You can get to that by typing in bb.showhiddenobjects in the cheat bar. And then if you type in debug in the search bar, all of the items in the game will show up that your sims typically could use places when they're ordering coffee at the barista or they're like cleaning something up or like any of the items you see them using but are not in the catalog are in the debug menu. So I grabbed a lot of that kind of stuff to decorate the interior of this place because it made more sense to me to have a lot of these types of items. So uh, <laughs> that's why there's a lot of that in here. So also, it's important if you guys decide to download this that you make sure you have the move objects cheat on because 
There are a lot of items that are raised and lowered in this build, so it's really important to have that sheet on to make sure that everything is placed properly if you download this. And if you would like to download this a lot, it is available on The Sims 4 Gallery if you search Griffey or the hashtag Miss Griffey. That information is also down below. And actually for a lot of my builds, uh, it's good to have that sheet on before you place things because I use move objects quite a lot in my builds. Uh, so that's definitely a useful cheat to have on hand, both for downloading my builds and other simmers in general. A lot of people use move objects, and if you don't have it on when you're placing a lot that uses it, a lot of items might drop or disappear. So uh, it's definitely a useful cheat to go ahead and have. But we're just, we painted one of the walls red because uh, there's definitely a strong red accent color in here, which I think is kind of good because it's kind of a violent color and obviously something crazy happened here. So that's kind of... Um, the, part of the reason I did that and also because I really liked the worn down red rug in here as well as the uh, red sign for the grocery store outside I thought it just looked really nice so I mean <laughs> I mean this place doesn't really look nice it looks very worn down and I have like the warning do not enter sign basically in the front and just lots of graffiti and boarded up windows and I just think it kind of got uh, the look I was going for at the end I'm pretty happy with how this came out but let me know what you guys do think of this build down below and like the <laughs> stolen ATM machine in the corner. It's all like strapped up. I imagine somebody tried to steal it at some point um, and now it's back in this store. I, I don't really know what the story is for that, but if you guys have any ideas or anything you think could have happened or why this store is in this state right now, I'd be very interested to hear your theories. I think it's always so fun to... Um, kind of theorize on how things came to be in The Sims or what families live in what houses and stuff like that. It's just a lot of fun and I really enjoy it. But anyway, we are coming to the end of the video here shortly. My cat is attacking my arm. So if you hear me like moving away from the mic, he keeps jumping on my arm and like biting it. <laughs> I don't know why. He's like staring at me right now. But anyway, <laughs> we are coming to the end of the video. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. You can also subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Oh my God, Rio. <laughs> And if you click that little bell, it'll turn on notifications so you'll be notified of every single time I upload a new video. Thank you guys so very much for watching, and I will see you guys soon. Bye, everybody. Uh -huh.